Hello and welcome to today's science lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera. Hello. hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. And when you're ready, guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Excellent. And next we'll do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up, push in our chairs. And we'll begin by stretching up high to the sky. High as we can. And then let's go down low, touch our toes. Now, let's go back up high one more time, guys. And this time, can we go tippy-toe high? And while we're there, let's have a wave. And then back down to touch your toes again. And now let's stand up and shake it out. Shake it out. Arms and legs, shake it out. And next, we'll do some rotations. We'll go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And now we can do five stretches to our right. One, two, Three, four, five. Very good, guys. And next, we'll do five stretches to our left. One, two, three, four, five. Brilliant, guys. And we'll finish with five claps. One, two, three, four. Five. Excellent. Have a seat. We've been learning about living things. The different, the different types of living things on our planet. And yesterday, in the previous lesson, we began learning about another type of living thing. If we go to the zoo, what type of living things are we likely to see? If we go to the zoo, what will you see at the zoo? Animals, excellent. If we go to the zoo and other places such as farms, we will see lots of different animals. So let's put on the board first, animals. A N I M A L S. Animals, 
Okay, guys? Now, remember, in the previous lesson, we learned to classify or categorize our animals into three different groups. Remember, based upon what they eat. Now, the first group we learned about were the animals that only eat plants. Only plants. Can anybody remember the name of animals? Herbivores. Excellent. Very well remembered. So let's write and spell herbivores. H E R B I V O R E S. Herbivores. And herbivores are the animals that eat plants. P L A N T S. So that's our first group, guys, herbivores. And then we moved on to look at animals that eat meat. Does anybody remember the meat eaters? Excellent. Carnivores. C A R N I V O R E S. Carnivores. Carnivores eat. What do carnivores eat? Meat. M E A T. So, what that means, carnivores eat meat. That means they eat other animals. And then we had our final and third category. These are the animals that eat both plants and meat. They can eat either, they're not bothered. But what was the name of that category? Omnivores. Yes, excellent, guys. Well remembered. O M N I V O R E S. And omnivores eat eat plants and meat. Well done. M E A T. Close brackets. So our three categories, herbivores, eat plants, carnivores, eat meat, and then omnivores, eat plants and meat. Yes, they get the best of both worlds, they can eat both. So now let's try to think, who can give me one example of a herbivore? A giraffe, excellent. A giraffe is an animal that eats plants. So the giraffe belongs in the herbivore category. G I R A F F E. Excellent. Great start. Giraffe is a herbivore. Now let's think about the animals that eat meat. Can somebody give me the name of a carnivore? A lion. Excellent. Lion is the king of the jungle and one of the biggest carnivores. How do we spell lion? L-I-O-N. Perfect. Now, our third column. Omni. Yes. Remember, lots of us have them at home. Dogs. Dogs are happy to eat meat, but if they have to, dogs will also eat plants. So that means dogs are Omnivores and dogs, D O G, and the plural form we will use S. Okay, so let's have the plural form for everyone giraffes, lions, dogs. Now, let's see if we can get three animals in each category that we can remember from the previous lesson. So, any more herbivores, guys? A deer, yes. Very well remembered. A deer that lives in the forest will eat grass. How do we spell deer? And because we're talking about the entire species, we will say deers. How about another carnivore? Tiger. Yes, very similar to a lion, a big cat. All of the big cats are carnivores. And then the tigers. 
Any more ideas? A bear. Yes, bear is a very big example of an omnivore. B, E, A, R, S. Excellent. So we've got two in each. Let's get one more here before. Rabbit. Rabbit. I was waiting for rabbit because some of us have rabbits as pets too. And if you do, you'll know that they eat plants. And maybe some vegetables too. But vegetables is food, so that doesn't matter. We're talking about types of living things. So deers and rabbits. R A. How do we spell rabbit, guys? R A B B I T S. Perfect. Another carnivore? Any more meat eaters? Yes, remember the big bird. The big bird that can fly and is a meat eater, eagle. E. Excellent, guys. And now we're on to our third category, omnivores. One more omnivore that eats both. A gorilla, yes. A gorilla, like a bear, very big animal. And it's happy to eat meat, but it can also eat plants. G O R I L L A. Gorillas. So now we have some good examples on the board of all three categories. So let's practice speaking one more time. Herbivores eat plants. Giraffes, deers, rabbits are all examples of herbivores. Carnivores eat meat. Lions, tigers, eagles are all examples of carnivores. And then our third column, omnivores. Eat plants and meat. Dogs, bears, gorillas. All examples of omnivores. So you can see how we learn to group our animals into three categories based on their feeding habits. Guys, that was excellent, well done. And what we're going to do in today's lesson, we're going to move on to learn how we can categorize animals into two distinct categories. Not three like yesterday, based on their foods, but today it will be based on two categories. And do you know how we're going to split them, guys? We're going to look at their skeletons. And we're going to look at what animals have a backbone. You know the bone that we have going up our back here? This is our backbone. That's what's known as a vertebrae. Now we can classify animals into two groups. The animals that have backbones, like we do, and we're known as vertebrates, or the animals that don't have backbones, which are known as invertebrates. So what we're going to do now is take a look at a PowerPoint presentation for our students to observe and listen to about the differences between animals with backbones and animals without. So let's take a look at the TV screen, guys. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation, Animals, animals. Lesson, number two. lesson number two. Yes, now you can see here, guys, there are two pictures. If we look at the picture on our left, we can see lots of different types of animals. But they all have one thing in common. None of these animals here have a backbone. Yes, so that means that these animals are in the group called invertebrate. Yes, invertebrate means no backbone. But then, if we look at the right-hand column, this picture, lots of different animals here. And also, you can see human. Now, this is the category or group of animals that have backbones. And these are known as vertebrates. Yes. So let's look and take a listen 
of how we can understand more about invertebrates and vertebrates. Animals are classified based on if they have a backbone or not in their bodies. Yes. Now take a look at this picture on the left, guys. What type of animal do you think this skeleton is of? You see the skeleton here? Zebra is close because it's the same family. It's a horse. This is the skeleton of a horse. And what you can see here is that a horse has a backbone. You see this row of bones here going along the top of the horse? This is the horse's backbone. So that means the horse is a vertebrate. It has a backbone. Yes, but, but on the right, what type of animal can you see? If you go to the sea, you might see it sometimes. And you have to be careful because they're dangerous. This is a jellyfish. Yes. Now, what do you notice about the jellyfish? Any backbone? No. No backbone. So this is the other type of group of animals, invertebrates. Yes, two different types. Invertebrates are animals that do not have a backbone such as this animal here. Do you know what animal it is? Goes very slowly. Snail, yes. This animal will go very slowly across the ground. And what does it have on its back? A shell. This is to protect, protect it because it doesn't have a backbone. But there are lots of different types of invertebrates. So let's take a look now. Invertebrates can be classified into eight smaller groups. Sponges are invertebrates that live in the ocean and feed on tiny particles. Yes, you can see these types of animals, sponges, no backbone, so invertebrate. Yes, live only in the sea, on the bottom of the sea. But there's lots of different types. Another one, Cynidarians. Very hard to say. Cynidarians are invertebrates that live in the ocean and have tentacles. Yes, Cynidarians is the name of the group of animals. And what type of animal is this? Jellyfish. So jellyfish is an example of a cynodiarian. Another type, annelids. Annelids are invertebrates whose bodies are made up of little round segments. Yes, if you look closely, you can see here that each little segment of the body is round and they're all pieced together and it looks like a worm and another type of worm round worms are invertebrates that have thin and round bodies yes lots of different types of worms that are invertebrates, no backbones. Another type, 
flatworms are invertebrates that have soft, flat bodies. Yes, you see, it's different to the round worm. Flat worms are flat, but sometimes they are nicer colours. What colour is this worm? Blue, orange, white. So the flat worms are prettier because they have nicer colours than the round worms. Mollusks. Now this is the family of invertebrates that the snail belongs to. Mollusks are invertebrates that usually have shells on their bodies. Yes. And the reason they have their shells is to protect their body because they don't have a backbone. Arthropods are invertebrates that have skeletons outside their bodies. Yes, skeletons outside the body. Does anybody know what type of animal this is? Scorpion. Yes, have to be careful because they're very sharp. You see here, if they get you, it will hurt. And then also, look at the scorpion's tail. You see this here? can sting you. And some of the scorpions are dangerous. They have venom. So if the scorpion stings you, you have to go to hospital. Echinoderms are invertebrates that have spines on their bodies. Yes spines on their bodies instead of backbones. Does anybody know what type of echinidoim this is? Anybody know? What does it look like? Starfish. Yes. That's why it's called starfish. starfish. Yes, this animal is called a starfish because it looks like a star. And now onto the type of animals that have backbones. Yes, and a good example for us to use, what type of animal, or is this a skeleton of? People. People. And you can see here, the big main bone that's going here is the backbone, known as the vertebrate. Vertebrates are animals that do have a backbone. And vertebrates can be classified into five smaller groups. Fish, birds, amphibians, reptile, and mammals. So invertebrates, eight different groups. Vertebrates, five different groups. Fish. Fish are vertebrates that live in water and breathe through gills. Gills, yes. Look on the side of the fish here. And you can see the flaps on the side. These are the gills that the fish breathes water through. Does anybody know what type of fish this is? No. What can you see on the fish? Can you see stripes? What do we call the animal with stripes in the zoo? Or tiger. This is a tiger fish. Because it has stripes, they call it the tiger fish. But it could be the zebra fish. <laughs> Amphibians are vertebrates that can live on land or in water. 
yes, they can swap, sometimes on land, sometimes in water. And what type of amphibian is this? A frog. Yes, a frog can live on land and a frog can go in water. Reptiles are vertebrates that are cold-blooded and have hard, scaly skin. Yes, what type of reptile is this? Does anybody know? Snake. Do you know what type of snake? This is a king cobra. Yes, you know, you see here, look at its neck, how it has this hood here on its neck. And that's how we know it's a king cobra. And then, birds. Birds are vertebrates too. That are warm-blooded and have wings and feathers. Does anybody know what type of bird this is? Eagle. Bigger. This is the, bigger than an eagle. This is the biggest bird in the world. Condor. Condor. The biggest bird on the planet. Huge. Yes. But it has a backbone, so it's a vertebrate. And finally, mammals. Mammals are vertebrates that are warm-blooded and have fur or hair on their bodies. Yes, we are mammals. This is the category of animals that we belong to. Humans are warm-blooded and have hair on our bodies. But what can you see in the picture? What type of mammal? Monkeys, yes. Monkeys are mammals too. Very closely related to humans. Any questions, guys? No. Okay, that was excellent. Well done. <laughs> Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation about the two different types of animals we're categorizing today. Those with the backbone, vertebrates, and those without backbones, invertebrates. And today's lesson contains some difficult vocabulary, hard to say, because it's quite scientific, the terms that are being used. But we've got a board exercise soon, but first of all, guys, let's do our stretch sequence. Let's stand up and push in our chairs. And for this sequence, we'll have a game of Teacher Says. So listen carefully, guys. If teacher says, we can do. If teacher doesn't say, don't do. So, teacher says, touch your ears. Teacher says, touch your nose. Teacher says, touch your stomach. Hands on head. Teacher never said. <laughs> teacher says, one hand on head, one hand on stomach. Teacher says swap. Teacher says swap. Teacher says swap. Swap. Arms by side. Teacher never said. <laughs> Teacher says arms in the air. Arms down. <laughs> Listen carefully, guys. <laughs> arms in the air. Teacher says arms down. Teacher says turn around. Teacher says, turn the other way. And back the other way one more time. <laughs> Teacher says, walking on the spot. Stop. Teacher says, stop. Jogging on the spot. Teacher never said. Teacher says, jogging on the spot. Teacher says, quickly. Teacher says, stop. Teacher says, down into a little ball. Five, four, three, 
two, one. Teacher says, jump. <laughs> Excellent, guys. And teacher says, sit down. And teacher says, it's now time for our flashcards activity. What we're going to do is we're going to help our students develop an understanding of invertebrates and vertebrates. So first of all, let's write the two words on the board to form two columns. So guys, the animals that don't have any backbones, invertebrates. I N V E R T E B R A T E S. Now I understand this word is quite difficult to say, even for a native speaker. So let's practice saying it once more. In vert a brit. Invertebrates. Now these are the animals, no backbone. No back, B A C K, and bone, B O N E. Okay. Invertebrates, no backbone. And the next category are the animals like us. We have a backbone. We are known as vertebrates. V E R T E B R A T E S. Backbone. Yes. So we have our two columns on the board now. Now, teachers, what you'll have to do prior to the lesson print off all the flash sheets and cut the animals into individual pictures. And what we're going to do is we're going to invite our students forward to show their picture and then decide together, is it an, an invertebrate, no backbone, or is it a vertebrate with a backbone? So I will demonstrate first with the first animal. What animal can you see, guys? Jellyfish. Now think of the word jelly. Jelly is very soft and squishy. Jellyfish, no backbone, so we will place jellyfish in the invertebrates column. Okay? So all together, jellyfish, jellyfish. invertebrates. Perfect. And what we'll do now is we'll go round the room and we'll give our students a picture each to demonstrate. So first of all, guys, let's close our eyes. And when someone wakes up, they're going to have a picture. Okay, so let's open our eyes. Who has the picture? Chu, your first or your second after me. So Chu, come forward and show your friends your picture. And let's see the animal first. Frog. 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 Okay, we have a frog. Now think back to the PowerPoint presentation. A frog is an amphibian. Do amphibians have backbones or no backbone? Backbone. Have backbone, excellent. Well done too, well remembered. So we can place the frog here. Brilliant, and we can say frog, frog. vertebrate. It has a backbone too, that was excellent. High five, big round of applause for Chu. Okay, so Chu now can relax. Everybody else, close your eyes. Let's open our eyes, guys. Who has the picture now? Now it's Lakgao's turn. Lakgao, come forward and present your picture to class. What can we see, guys? Worms. Yes, now this is a pretty type of worm known as a flatworm, but they all share the same characteristics. Do worms have backbones? No backbone. No backbone. Well done. So where will we place the worms in the no backbone column? So we can say together, worms, invertebrates. Yes, no backbones. Invertebrates. 
Lacau, that was brilliant. High five and a big round of applause for Lacau. <laughs> so teachers, you can see the activity we're doing in our classroom now. You can pause the video and carry on with your students. And remember to use a different student for each picture and then have the class practice speaking together. So play on for around 10 minutes or so and we're going to carry on here now. Okay, let's open our eyes, guys. Who has the picture now? Pak Bung, please come and join me at the front. Now, this is a funny looking animal. Can anybody remember what this is called? Sponge. Yes, sponges live at the bottom of the sea. Now, do we think they have a backbone? No backbone, correct. So if they don't have a backbone, we'll place them in our column here. Pak Boon, that's brilliant. And we can say sponge invertebrate because sponges have no backbone. No backbone. Sponge invertebrate. Pak Boon, brilliant. High five and a big round of applause for Pak Boon. Next picture, let's see. Okay, now it's Prel's turn. If Prel can bring her pictures to the front of class, please. And let's see what animal is on Prel's picture. Okay, guys, can we see? What? Not an eagle, a bird. Bigger than an eagle. Do you remember the name of the bird I said? Condor. Now, do birds have backbones? Yes, they do. So we will place the bird in our vertebrate column. Now, can you place the bird in the vertebrate? Okay. Round of applause for Prel. And now, on to our next student. Now, time for Pat. So, Pat, can you bring your picture forward, please? And let's see what animal Pat has on his flash picture. What can we see, guys? Monkeys. Yes, we can see monkeys. Now, do monkeys have backbones? Yes, yes, they do. Monkeys are very similar to humans. So, we can place monkeys in the backbone column. So, Pat? Can you place it a bit higher up here? Excellent, that's better. And now we can say monkeys, monkeys. vertebrates. Excellent, Pat, very well done. High five, big round of applause for Pat. <laughs> Our next student. Now it's Bang Pong's turn. What animal will Pang Pong bring forward? Let's see. Let's see if we can remember the name of this animal. Quite dangerous. Bang Pong, can you show the class? Okay, there you go. Can anybody remember the name of this animal? With its two pincers and its stingy tail? Scorpion. Scorpion. Now have a close look, guys. Does this type of animal have a backbone or no backbone? This. No backbone, yes. So you can say, Pang Pong, scorpion. scorpion. Yeah, we can go here, that's just as good. Okay, scorpion, scorpion. invertebrates. Excellent, Pang Pong, well done. High five, big round of applause for Pang Pong. Now, just a few left, so let's keep going, guys. Next animal, next student. Now, it's with Nadia. So let's see if Nadia can bring her picture forward for us to see. What animal can you see? Snail. Now, notice the snail has the shell on its back. But does a snail have a backbone? No. Snails have no backbones, so we will place it in our column here. 
Now, a bit more here, so we've got the two columns. There we go. So we can say snail invertebrates. Nadia, that's excellent. Very well done from Nadia. And now, on to our next student. It's now time for Down to bring her picture forward. And think carefully about this one, guys, because people can sometimes get confused. What can we see on the picture? Fish. Now, do you remember what type of fish? Tiger fish with stripes. Now, do fish have backbones or no backbones? Fish have backbone. Lots of people think they don't have backbones, but fish do. So we will place fish in our vertebrate column. Excellent, Dan. That's very good. So we can say fish, fish. Backbones. backbones. So they are vertebrates. 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 Well done. Excellent, Dan. Big round of applause. Now time for one more, our final student. And that will be Net. Net, can you bring your animal forward, please? Let's see what animal Net has on his flashcard. Okay, so what can you see on the flashcard, guys? A snake. Now, a snake belongs to a group of animals called reptiles. Do snakes have backbones? Do you think? Yes, many people, too, think snakes don't have backbones. But they do. So where will we place snakes, guys? Backbone, Backbone yes. Vertebrates. Vertebrates. Yes, okay, Net, that will do. Excellent. So we can say together, snake, snake. Vertebrates. vertebrates. Can you say, Net, snake? snake. Vertebrates. vertebrates. Excellent. Very well done. That was excellent, guys. So now we have all our vocabulary on the board and you can sort of see the difference between the animals, the ones with backbones and the ones without. So let's practice speaking one more time. Invertebrates, no backbones, jellyfish, worms, sponges, snails, scorpions. But animals with backbone, backbone. Vertebrates. vertebrates, monkeys, monkeys. Frog. frog, fish, fish. Bird. bird, and snake. And snake. Excellent, guys. Very well done. <laughs> and now it's time for our worksheet part of the lesson. And for this worksheet, our students have to use their colouring skills. Because what we've got, we've got a picture. And the picture contains lots of animals, some of them without a backbone, invertebrates, and some of them with a backbone, vertebrates. What our students need to do is they need to show they can tell the difference by colouring the invertebrates only. So guys, the animals with no backbone are the animals to colour. If you think the animal has a backbone, no need to do anything. And then, when our students are finished, we'll be able to tell the difference. So what's the first thing to do, guys? Write our names on top. And give our students around 10 minutes for this, so that they can have time to colour and think too. So, Chu, this one's for you. You're welcome. Pat, for you. Nadia, for you. Net, this one's for you. Down, here's yours. Thank you, Chu. You're welcome. Bang one for you. You're welcome. Plough for you. And Lakgau, this one's for you. So have a look at your picture, guys. And from the PowerPoint presentation, and also some of the animals we have on the board, what you need to do is look at for these animals. If you see these types of animals, no backbone colour. If you see animals like birds or monkeys or fish, no need to colour because they have backbones, they are vertebrates. And you can colour them any colour you like.
You can have different colors or you can have the same colors. It's totally up to you. So let's see. Excellent pack boom. Yes, the first one is Nova. Okay, excellent bang pon. No backbone, that's right, correct. And then also in the ocean, there's some in the ocean. The jellyfish, yes. Okay. Yes. Backbone, what type of animal? Jellyfish. No backbone. So we call it the jellyfish. And that one too, that's similar, that's like a scorpion. So we can call it that one too, it has no backbone. Well you see, some of our animals, like birds, we don't need to colour. Fish, dolphin, we don't colour. Them animals have backbones. Yes, colour this one too. Let's see, I hadn't thought about this one at the bottom. Yes, because that's like, we can call her because that's like the sponge or the snail, the shell. Octopus. Octopus too, yes. Yes, the octopus, no backbone. Bee, a bee, does a bee have a backbone? Insects, no backbone, we can call it a bee. Excellent, guys. And you can use different colours for different animals, or you can use the same colour. So you can see, Nadia, the ones that we think have backbones. Same colour. No backbone. Colour that one. But the fish, some colour has a backbone. And the dolphin is a mammal. Don't call it the dolphin because it has a backbone. But many people get confused between snakes and fish. They think no backbone, but snakes and fish have backbones. They are vertebrates. That's excellent, Net. And Net noticed too that the bird has a worm. So Net has coloured the bird I call it the worm, but not the bird, because the worm is an invertebrate and the bird is a vertebrate. So we can call it the worm, but not the bird. Fish, see, I told you people get confused. The fish has a backbone. Okay, Ned? Okay. Yes, we call it that one, no backbone. That's like the scorpion. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet activity where they had to look at the picture and colour the animals with no backbone, which are the invertebrates. But anything in the picture that has a backbone, like the person, the dog, the bird, the fish, and the dolphin, they are vertebrates. They have backbones, so no need to colour. And my students all did a great job, so excellent, guys. <laughs> and that's all for today's lesson. So we hope you've enjoyed it and found it interesting and now know how to tell the difference between animals with backbones and without. And we'll see you again soon for the next lesson. So can we turn to wave and say goodbye, guys? Bye-bye. See you again soon.